having an issue with my DL429 on the dual temperature and I wanted to try to compare the Fluke 52 to and the issue I was having, I've got Cooper Actions clamps, got one on the hot water supply, I got one on the cold. With the DL429, when these are on there, these clamps have, they react to each other where the temperature's not true. Like right now, I've got a 52 and a half degree differential. 128 on one, 75.9 on the other. With the DL429, what I'm getting is, once you put both clamps on, they have like a reactance to each other, a reaction to each other, to where once you clamp it on another one, it seems like they're getting feedback and it'll change the number. So I'm going to take my hot, which is 128 degrees. I'm going to put it on my T1. It's reading 127. Close enough. Now let's see what happens when I plug in T2. What happens to 127? See, it goes to 114. And then if I go to my second temperature, instead of reading 75, it goes to 87. If I unplug, or if I, I don't even have to unplug it, if I take the top one, the hot water, it's up here. If I just take it off, that number will revert back to 74. Then I put it back on, it goes back to 87. So this can't handle using pipe clamps. I believe the fluke is the same way. Uh, I think if two of these are used, I think it has the same reaction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it in. I've got 74. Now I'm going to have to move it in order to... This one's too sh short. Move it. Let's plug this one in and see if it causes the same reaction. Okay, the fluke. did not cause the same reaction. I'm getting a differential. And I am on the copper. Here. So now what I can't do is I don't have two of these flukes. I don't know if I plug in two of the flukes because I read somebody said they had an issue with the flukes doing this. Okay, that did change it there. Hold on. Yeah, 75, the water just getting a little cooler. And clamp it. Yeah, it's not doing anything. So the fluke probes aren't having a reaction to each other, it's the Cooper Atkins. With the DL429, they have a reaction. So with this one plugged in, say it went to 87, which it's not. So I found one thing you can do to get by is we're reading 127 degrees. Let's see what we're reading before we take it off. I'm going to turn off the hot water. Line should cold temperature. Okay, temperature one, it's reading 114. Let me unplug the one. We're at 127.6. So if I take a piece of Teflon and put it on there, if I take a piece of wide Teflon, to make sure that the clamp is not touching the metal at all because 
as long as that part there is touching all Teflon, I've got some white Teflon. Usually this will read properly. Yeah, I see 75. The differential is higher instead of being like 27. Turn on the hot water again. With the tap line on, we're getting 126. Without the tap line, you get 113 when they're both plugged in. And if you just use them separately, you get the true reading. 127.6. It's 127.6 without the tap line. lose about a degree of accuracy if you have to use the Teflon, so there's another issue. Eh, about half a degree. But when you plug the other one in, it doesn't change. So if you're using the Cooper Atkins clamps with the DL429, obviously you have to compensate for that, because if you put them both on a copper line, you're going to read differently. With the Fluke 52, we didn't have that issue, as you saw. No uh, compensation is needed. So there's something reacting within the meter, apparently with just these clamps. Because it didn't do it with the Fluke. And they're not reacting here as well. Take one out. Doesn't change. So it's just with the DL429. But I wanted to put that out there in case somebody, you know, had these type of clamps. I even had this happen with the thermal couples that came with it. I had them clamped down to my suction and dish, my liquid line at home and I insulated them with uh, Rubitex and then put a clamp on them and I got 54 degrees on my suction line, I had 84 degrees on my liquid line and when I put them both in they both went to 69 degrees, they averaged out. got my UEI DL429. I noticed a little glitch in the temperature. And I've got both of them hooked up. See my temperature reading. Then if I unhook one of them, it reads what it's supposed to read. I switched them around. If I plug it back in, it goes back to 68. If I go to the second one, it reads 70, but if I unplug it, it's reading a suction line. And it reads at 54 degrees, which it should be. So there's one little issue with the DL429, you've got both of them plugged in at the same time. It's inaccurate. But after fiddling with them a little bit, all of a sudden they started reading okay. And I noticed it's like there's a little something wrong with this one here. So that's why I decided to, I wanted to get the Atkins clamp just for, uh, Cooper, the Cooper clamps just for convenience. 
And then when I plugged them in, I noticed on this one here they started acting goofy. Unfortunately, I don't have two of these to where I can plug them in and try them out. Because I saw somewhere, somebody posted somewhere that they had two fluke clamps. And they had that same issue, and that's where I got the Teflon idea was from them. But as you can see, if you use a fluke, and there's no paint on that. Hold on. There's my issue. Right there. There we go. I don't know if I had it on right while ago, so let's try that. Alright. Okay, we're at 122. Let's plug in. Let's plug in with the one from the cold side. Let's see if that number changes. Plug you there. It does change. I didn't. Ha I had it on the paint. So, even with the fluke style, they're gonna do it. So if you have clamp meters, pipe clamp, if you don't have a protection on one of the lines to insulate it from conductivity, I guess it's gonna it's gonna give you this type of error. Now, if you go ahead, and I clamp that down. What are we reading? It says 118 right now. Let's put it on the. Teflon. That doesn't change. Plug this back in. Didn't change. Put it back on the copper. See if it changes this time. Changes. So. This is a nice meter. If you have the thermocouples and you're measuring air temperature, you should have no problems with differentials. But if you're using, uh, even if you're clamping them to your thermocouples to copper, you might get an issue with them. You definitely will have an issue with them if you're using Cooper or Fluke clamps. You will have that issue unless you put a layer of Teflon, something that's non-conductive over it. Uh, you're gonna lose about a half a degree, it seems like, on the hot side. We're running, running 120.7 on top of the Teflon. Shoot, not even causing an issue. Temperature's dropping. Hundred and eighteen point six on the Teflon. Nineteen point five off the Teflon. Let's put it back on again. Just for giggles. Yeah, you're gonna lose about a degree of accuracy on the Teflon. So that is the downside of the DL429. The the dual temperature has a reaction with pipe clamps. Uh, it's having, an, I guess, an electrical reaction being on copper. So if you have one pipe clamp, you go from one line to the other, you can get a, a, an accurate reading of your pipe temperature. 
If you want them both on at the same time to get a differential, I suggest putting just a layer, one thin layer of Teflon tape on there and figure about one degree inaccuracy as far as the one that's on the pipe. On the cold side, I noticed it didn't seem like it was that bad. Like you get in the 50s or whatever, it doesn't seem like it's one degree. It seems like it's pretty close. Because I did it on the suction line, I was reading 54 and a half, and I think I was reading like 55, and it dipped down to 54.8. But uh, it's just something I wanted to post it about the DL429. So far, I like the meter. Um, I've been using it instead of the Redfish lately just to try it out. Uh, the clamp, I like when I'm doing my maintenance, I actually, it's, it's a lot easier just to take the clamp, get your hermetic and your fan amp draws off capacitors and then quickly get your uh, electrical measurements off the capacitor and do your calculation to see if the capacitor is good, what your readings are. If you, if a, if a, if you want the poor man set up and you have, you're going to take just one pipe clamp, get your suction line measurement and your pressure off a Z manifold if you have one and do your superheat and then or you can put it on your liquid line and put your Z-man on your high side, get your temperature and do your subcooling. This meter is pretty fat, you know, it's pretty nice in that aspect. It will uh, help you to get all that information quickly without having to swap leads or do anything goofy with it because with the leads in here you can get your amp draw, uh, your top, your top one is your amp reading. And your bottom one's bolted, you don't have to take the leads out or do anything weird for that. And you get the, the measurement right away. You don't even have to cycle through any of the buttons here in order to get that measurement. It's just like you clip it on there, bam, you get your amp draw, get your voltage on there, do your calculation for your capacitors. And then you've got the thermocouples you can either put on top of your lines to get your temperature. But obviously, like I said, when you're using copper or any metal type of line, I would suggest putting a piece of Teflon on there if you're going to put two on there at one time. As far as air temperatures, not a problem. It'll do the air temperatures. It has no issues with that because it's not touching anything as far as reacting to metal. But that's a little, little quick overview of a problem I was having with the DL429 and the positive things about the DL429 that I like. I haven't used the field piece clamps with it. Uh, like Dave Shankland has. He likes that feature. I had a couple and at the time what I was using it for, the, the clamp, the head accessories that I had, I've got the manometer accessory and, and it worked out okay. But for me that's not a, a big plus. If you don't have a lot of the heads for field piece, that's probably not a selling feature. But if you have a lot of the heads and you want to continue using them and not your field piece meter, then this might be the guy you want to go to. So that is an overview of the DL429, the good and the bad. Thanks for watching.